Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Laura and this is Culturally Nonsense. Before I forget, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Let me know if you have any questions or give me your thoughts on Lula Rich, which is what we're talking about today. So this isn't really going to be a complete review video because a bunch of other people have done that already. And if you haven't heard of Lula Rich, it is the four part docu-series that just came out on Amazon about the MLM LuLaRoe. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos before, you know that I am very much anti-MLM. I'll have a link to some of those other videos up here if you don't know what an MLM is or if you'd like to see some discussion about shady business tactics. Anyway, back to Lula Rich. This is a documentary that talks about the rise and fall of Lula... Lula Ro, which is a pretty infamous MLM. Number one, because they had huge buy-in costs. So compared to some other MLMs where you might lose a more modest amount of money, because the amount of money you were spending was so much greater, you might lose tens of thousands of dollars or even more, which was really sensational. And also because it exploded in such a big way and then had such a catastrophic issue in terms of design, changing of policies, actual products. So like I said, the documentary goes into all of that. I found it pretty entertaining and interesting. They do actually interview Mark and Deanne Stidham, who are the founders of LuLaRoe, which some other documentaries haven't done. I will say it is a little funny to hear them directly lie and then be presented with them saying something completely opposite in their, in their depositions or, you know, saying something and then seeing it cut and being directly refuted. Me, because I am anti-MLM, I enjoy seeing, you know, them being confronted with the truth right afterwards. Well, I guess they're not confronted because it's not like they're shown the documentary, but you see them say something and then you see how that's false. Anyway, what we're going to do today is look at some of the reviews of LuLaRoe, Lula Rich. Uh, and specifically reviews from a lot of disgruntled LuLaRoe sellers or pro MLM people. So these are only one star reviews. And I wanted to do this because overwhelmingly, if you look on Amazon, there are almost 5,000 reviews total, I think, and 95% are uh, five star <laughs> or positive. And then there's, you know, a percentage of, of one star reviews. And a lot of them are pretty similar. Now, that isn't to say that some people didn't have genuine criticisms of the documentary because, of course, like any piece of art, criticism is valid. And if you didn't enjoy this, that's fine. You know, there were some valid criticisms, like a lot of this stuff was talked about in the Vice documentary, which came out, I think, four years ago now. And that is true. A lot of this information has been presented in different sources. And if you are interested in looking at some of those as well, I'll put links in the description to that Vice documentary, which is available on YouTube. So for example, if you don't have Amazon Prime and can't watch Lula Rich, but are interested in this, you can watch that, I think, half hour, 45 minute Vice documentary, which goes over a lot of the same stuff, as well as some other creators who have done really good deep dives on this as well. I'll link uh, Mooncats part one and part two. I think hers is my favorite because it's really long, very detailed uh, and amusing as well. If you haven't heard of her, you should also check out her videos because they're really great. So like I said, let's get into reading some of these one star reviews. And uh, this first one is pretty interesting because uh, the documentary came out on September 10th and this review is from September 9th. So it appears that unless this person had some type of special access or screening, they were reviewing something that they had not seen, which is a very brainwash, culty tactic, you know, people who just think it's a negative about their company, so they have to defend their company, and they won't even allow themselves to look at the criticism of LuLaRoe. So this person says, lame and so out of date. This is laughable trash. As in any self-employed business, you get what you make of it. 
hard work pays off and those retailers that maybe didn't run their businesses successfully are lashing out and bringing the negative onto those who have stuck it out through the kinks of a new highly successful business model that is now thriving and amazing. Couple things about this one. I will say the vast majority of negative reviews that I saw were along this vein and that is it's the retailer's fault. They're just bitter. They're just complaining. They're whiny. They should have known what they were getting into. They should have stuck it out. They didn't work their business. They didn't work hard enough. And this is something that we see again and again in MLM from people who are still inside. They blame people for quitting or losing money and they say, you just didn't work hard enough. When in reality, MLMs are pretty much designed for the majority of people to fail. The majority of people lose money and a lot of the people who are inside might not actually be making a profit either because it's pretty hard to keep track of what you're actually gaining when you have to spend so much money on product in the first place. And then let's say you spend a thousand dollars on product over the course of a month and then, you know, people eventually buy a lot of your product and you might make $1,200. And because it's some period of time later, you think, oh, wow, I made $1,200. My business is so great. But you don't remember how much money you had spent in the first place. So you didn't actually make $1,200. You made $200, which is not a sustainable profit if you want to live on that money. This happens to so many people. And a lot of the time you really only reconcile with that once you're out of the MLM. So a lot of people on the inside say, you just didn't work hard enough when really these businesses are set up like scams and this happens to most people and it's not because they just didn't work hard enough. Again, this person is uh, very salty. Well, bless their hearts. All I have to say to those who are still complaining four years later about things that are no longer facts. Well, bless your heart. I for one have never felt the pressure to build a team. I just got from Mexico, which I earned 100% based on my sales. I make money every single month without a team. Hey you, if you're reading this, you are enough. Okay, I think, thanks for the positivity at the end, but uh, you know, it's probably wrapped up in that MLM toxic positivity BS. But anyway, I would be really interested if this distributor, you know, who got their trip to Mexico, if it was really based on her sales or the, you know, sales of people in her team. She says she's never felt pressure to build a team, but that doesn't mean she hasn't done it. And a lot of the time, the way you get rewards or incentives in MLMs, a lot of the time they're trips, they are based on sales, but that's really just you as the distributor buying products. They don't keep track of who you're selling them to. And it could just be people in your team buying stuff or you buying stuff. There's no outside person that you're selling to. The sale is to you because you as the distributor oftentimes act like a customer inside the MLM. Also, the fact that, you know, some of these things are no longer true, maybe LuLaRoe changed some of their policies, doesn't mean that they didn't happen in the first place. <laughs> and the fact that things like this were so shitty did happen is really bad in and of itself. Here's another one. Laughable. So what you're saying is people are entitled and wanted no actual work and all the money. When that didn't work, they sued. It's legit just showing American entitlement. But, but, but... I thought daddy said I could do it. I just had no idea how to budget like a real adult, so I'm gonna stomp my foot like a toddler. Again, MLMs are predatory and millions of people get roped into them and hundreds of thousands of them quit in worse off financial situations than when they started. Pretending like this is all about personal responsibility and that people were too dumb to figure this out, it happens to smart people. People who are really educated get roped into these things. If you're ever one to think that I'm so smart, this could never apply to me, you're exactly the type of person they're looking for because you think you're above all of this. In reality, a lot of these people did put in a lot of work and tried to work for their business, but because of the way MLMs are set up, it was not possible for them to succeed. This one is pretty culty, in my opinion. It says, great job showing LuLaRoe has done nothing wrong and trying to make life better. Every company has their ups and downs, but this company's willingness to make right is amazing. Like the girl said, 
If LuLaRoe is at fault, so is every other direct sales company. Direct sales is what you as a business owner makes it. You either succeed or fail your choice. What's awesome about this one is that you don't need people under you to make decent money. It's the greedy ones who think they need thousands to be successful. This person is so close to stumbling upon something when they say that if what LuLaRoe did is wrong, that every other direct sales company is also doing something wrong. And that is correct because most of them are pyramid schemes. LuLaRoe is not significant in that they were the one company that you know was evil and scammy. They're significant in that they had a big profile spotlight on them and that they got caught because they were so flamboyant. Like I mentioned, the extremely high buy-in costs they used to have. Now that is something they have changed as they've tried to lessen their profile, but it, MLMs in general are predatory and dangerous and suck people in to have this cult-like mentality that the MLM is right and good and anyone who says anything against it is negative and evil and they just didn't work hard enough and they deserve what they get. Here's another uh, very disgruntled LuLaRoe employee currently, or no, I shouldn't say employee because they're not employees. They don't get any benefits of employees. They are contracted independent sellers. This documentary was boring and a pathetic attempt, attempt to shame a company that does so much good. How many companies match fundraising dollars, make personal visits to trainings, give out their number and actually listen to their retailers? This is just a few retailers who made poor financial decisions and need someone to blame. Nobody makes you order, take a loan out behind your spouse's back or encourages debt. They encourage financial freedom and empower women to make it as big as they want. Talk to some actual retailers who are still in the business in person, not just cut and paste interviews to fit your agenda. It's pathetic and quite laughable. LuLaRoe is an amazing company. Hashtag not going anywhere. So there are a couple things about this one that I would like to point out that are, that are pretty interesting. Um, they say, you know, no one makes you order, but with many of these direct sales companies, you have an amount of volume that you have to order per month to stay active. So in that sense, there is a very real amount that you have to keep ordering if you want to keep making money with the company. So yes, they do make you order. If you wanna stay active, you have to order a certain amount per month in most MLMs. They also talk about taking out a loan behind, behind your spouse's back. And this is something that they, I actually don't remember them talking about this in the documentary. Uh, but something LuLaRoe did and a couple other places did was if you were having an issue with your spouse, if they thought you were spending too much money, you could check a box when you were ordering your next inventory shipment and there would basically be some type of packing slip in it that said, congratulations, you know, you're getting free LuLaRoe or samples or something like that. It was essentially a way for you to spend money without your spouse knowing and the company was kind of complicit in encouraging you to do this because they gave you the option to have a piece of paper that would lie to your spouse and say that this inventory was, you know, gotten for free when you were actually paying money for it. So yes, I would say that LuLaRoe did encourage people to do that because the point was you as the consultant are really the customer. You are spending your money so that LuLaRoe makes money. So if you have to lie to your spouse in order to keep spending money for LuLaRoe, by all means, do it. Ah, this one has a lot of phrases in all caps. There's all caps sprinkled throughout and the entire bottom part is all caps. So I'm going to try to emphasize this so you guys can see that. <laughs> One-sided slandering of my business. This is repulsive and completely untrue of anything that has ever happened in my business. LuLaRoe has blessed my life and not one of the topics covered in this trash has ever touched my business in five years. There is another side. The producers are nowhere near decent people. There are current consultants in this one-sided stale problem documentary that has been resolved or even true. They bait and switch the owners and current consultants that this was a good thing to tell your story, unlike what it is. There is a group of current consultants that are fed up with this and find it pretty crappy that Amazon is pumping and advertising this without telling the whole story. Many of us are talking about what to do as Amazon is allowing this bashing of many current retailers that support their family with LuLaRoe. 
I am one of them, three exclamation points. I am a single mother that you are affecting, three exclamation points. So what is the next step for us? Well, quit ordered from Amazon as a collective effort, cancel our Prime accounts, sue Amazon for slander. So who knows what Amazon has hit a, <laughs> who knows, but Amazon has hit a wasp nest. Amazon is clueless to what this is doing to our businesses. I don't think they're clueless uh, because I, I will say that the point of this documentary, yes, to, to people who say it is one-sided, it definitely has an anti-MLM slant, but MLMs in general are bad. So if Amazon even knew that this was anti-MLM, I, I don't know if they'd have a problem with that. There was there were a couple other cynical comments that said, you know, oh yeah, stop buying from independent retailers so that you can buy from Amazon instead. And I don't really support that because I do have a bunch of problems with Amazon, but that's beside the point. Uh, this person is very, very angry, obviously. And the fact that they're saying that none of this is true, obviously, these are the experiences of a bunch of other retailers and consultants with LuLaRoe, back office people, a lot of them have receipts from their personal experiences. So, you know, this person is just clearly brainwashed. This person says, far from the truth. Four years now and never been pressured to do anything. It is my business and only I make it work or fail. I never had a team under me and I still make profit every month. You get out what you put in. It is sad to see that because some did not put time or effort into running their business like a business, that they want bad that they want bad mouth others when they only have themselves to blame blame. Again, here's the personal responsibility argument that we hear all the time that it's your fault, you didn't make the business work, I make it work, blah, blah, blah. From this person, we don't really see if they're making enough money for a full-time income. I find it very suspect if they were able to do this without a team because they would be, ha they, you know, they'd have to be selling thousands of pieces of clothing a month, which is technically possible, but extremely difficult. So I don't know if they're using this as a little side hustle you know, if you buy a couple pieces of clothing and sell them at a higher markup, you could make some money. Maybe this person is just doing this as a way to get a you know a couple hundred extra dollars a month, and that's fine. But that's not the vision that is sold to many people when they enter an MLM. You know, they're told you don't have to put in that much work and you can make thousands of dollars, become a millionaire like X Y Z, and they trot out all the high earners of the company and lie to most people and say that you can be like them. And then of course what happens is that a lot of people do put in a lot of time and effort and money, but as we saw when LuLaRoe exploded, networks became oversaturated and people weren't able to make the sales because there were so many distributors. It's just a business model that's designed to fail if too many people get into it. And then of course, with the other distribution problems, the quality control problems, all of that just snowballed and made the whole LuLaRoe thing pretty untenable. So this last one is also kind of funny to me because it directly touches on pyramid scheme issues. It says, a very biased view on a company, little to no people know nothing about. Old retailers who made poor decisions uh, business decisions that cost them their business. No scam here. If a product is being sold and making profit with no force to participate in their MLM leadership side, it is not a pyramid scheme. I, I mean, I guess that's true. If a product is being sold and you're making a profit off of it and you're not being asked to join a team, then sure, it's, it might not be a pyramid scheme, but that's the opposite of what was going on here. We heard from many, many people, and you can see from compensation plans that the majority of the money was coming from teams, from building a downline, the bonus checks were where the real money was, and that's a hallmark of a pyramid scheme. So it, there's no point in saying this is not a pyramid scheme because exactly that was happening. Anyway, that is just my two cents on some of these one-star reviews. As you can see, a lot of them were coming from disgruntled people still inside MLM or LuLaRoe itself. A lot of them don't seem to really be looking at the issues here or thinking about things in a critical lens. They're just defending their company. 
and, you know, just saying, oh, you're lying or you didn't make it work, you didn't want it, you didn't work hard enough, really displaying a lot of the thinking that's really cult-like and been told to them by the company. Yet more examples of how LuLaRoe is kind of like a cult. So I hope you enjoyed this read-through or kind of debunking of some of these comments. Like I said with anything, there were some real critical one-star reviews from people who didn't like it. These ones just happened to be very pro MLM, so I thought I would talk about them. And uh, if you like this video, like it. As I said at the top of the video, remember to comment or subscribe if you would like to do so. And I'll be back with another video shortly. Bye!